Shalom, this is Quay. We are feasting on the book of Revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ that the Father gave to him to give to John, who represented giving it to all of us, even these 2,000 years later. We thank you, Lord, for the blessing that comes with the reading, the studying, and the obeying of the words of this prophecy. We thank you for your grace and your presence with us today as we study our passage. Hallelujah. Today we are going to be looking at the sixth seal. It is in the sixth chapter of Revelation verses 12 through uh, 16. And um, hallelujah, the Lord reigns. And remember, even as uh, this verse starts out, the Lamb is the one opening the seal, the worthy Lamb of God. Hallelujah. And he is overseeing everything that is described here. I saw when the Lamb opened the sixth seal, and there was a great earthquake. The sun became as black as sackcloth, made of goat's hair, and the full moon became like blood. The stars of heaven fell to the earth like a fig tree drops unripe figs when shaken by a great wind. The heaven ripped apart like a scroll being rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved from their places. Then the kings of the earth and the great men and the military commanders and the rich and the mighty and everyone, slave and free, hid themselves in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains. And they tell the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of the one seated on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come, and who is able to stand? Look up, for our redemption draws nigh. That is what Jesus said when he was explaining things that would precede his return to the earth. And he spoke of earthquakes, didn't he? He said there will be earthquakes in uh, many different places, and it was plural. Now, this passage begins, and it speaks of one particular earthquake. And so uh, this is must be focusing on a particular earthquake. But Jesus spoke of earthquakes. And if you are uh, aware of this, there are more earthquakes happening in the earth right now, again, than ever before. You can, uh, you know, we can find out information on just about anything we want now, and you can find out where the earthquakes are happening as they're happening. You can find out what, you know, scale they are. And uh, when we find this, we just relate it back to the truth. Oh, this is what Jesus spoke about. You will hear of these things happening. And remember, he said, when you hear of these things, do not be afraid and do not be deceived. Our study of the book of Revelation is actually to bring us into a maturity and a perfection um, of understanding of faith in Jesus and what is happening in the earth that actually wards out fear. It's to bring us 
into an even deeper intimate love relationship with him because it's his perfect love that casts out all fear. And so this is speaking of a great earthquake. Now, I have to uh, say that once again, I, I can only present this to you as a, uh, a proposal. But in this passage that we just read, I believe that this sixth seal begins to speak of things that will be with the trumpets and with the bowls of wrath. This passage ends up speaking of the wrath of the Lamb. And so it's bringing in various dimensions. Remember, we have uh, spoken in the past that, especially when we looked at Revelation chapter 12, that the, the Word of God is written in such a way that it interweaves different times and different dimensions that in even one verse, you can be going, you can jump for thousands of years. And so we open our spirit, we open our heart, we pray for the spirit of God to, uh, to teach us and train us in such a way that Again, our main goal in this particular study is so that we can have a very basic understanding of how the book of Revelation is a culmination of all the other scriptures and how we need not fear, we need not be afraid, uh, we need not be deceived. And so... Uh, we're not doing it in a just a strictly scholarly way or even from uh we're not trying to impress dogmatically even our views of when these things will happen etc the truth that is in here is for all time and there is no doubt we are in days of birth pangs we are in days when the entities that are the four horsemen definitely are riding throughout the earth and various manifestations of them are occurring. And the main thing for us, in this passage, we also read that uh, of those who are terrified, that is not us. We do not fear the terror of night. We do not fear the pestilence that stalks in darkness because of our trust. And we are living in a time right now when the Lord is giving us a very serious, uh, a very serious call to, uh, in one sense, in one sense, shut ourselves in with him as never before in the, in the sense of pressing in through worship, through prayer, through uh, reading the word, asking the Holy Spirit to give us revelation as we read the word, in letting the Spirit show us what we need to repent of, what we are afraid of, so that we are being prepared uh, to be his witnesses to uh, work in the harvest for the harvest is not over yet the harvest is in one sense just beginning the you know the the harvest of of souls hallelujah and so uh the lamb opens the sixth seal and there was a great earthquake. It doesn't say where that earthquake is. There are other uh, scriptures that talk about an earthquake in Jerusalem. Uh, but this, this particular uh, passage does not, does not give us the location. But there was a great earthquake. Now, 
is the blackening of the sun associated with this earthquake? Or once again, has the passage jumped to another, uh, another day, another situation? But it, that, that it's very plausible it could be either of those. I want to remind us that uh, Joel speaks of the sun being darkened. Isaiah speaks of darkness covering the earth. Um, and there's various ways that this darkness could manifest in the natural. It's a spiritual darkness as well as a natural. There could be eclipse. It could be darkened because the earthquake sets off a volcano and a volcano spews ash and darkens the sun to such a degree that everybody in the earth at once experiences a darkening of the sun. You probably know that when there's situations where a volcano erupts and it's dark uh, in certain places of the earth. This seems to be uh, a little more worldwide, although there are also smaller earthquakes and volcanoes erupting. Uh, it, it speaks that uh, the, uh, the full moon becomes like blood once again. That could be from an eclipse. That could also be, uh, I, I believe, that you know certain things, again, from, from volcanoes uh, and, and things that happen in the atmosphere can cause the moon to have a reddish cast to it. Uh, the stars of the heaven fell to the earth like a fig tree drops its unripe figs when shaken by a great wind. There are aspects of this prophecy that are also spiritual and supernatural in nature. These, uh, the things that are happening now with uh, the sixth seal and as we go further and we will read about the trumpets and uh, the vials of, of wrath, the bowls of wrath, they will manifest in the natural, but there's a very strong supernatural component to them as well. And sometimes uh, it's uh, a certain area of the world will experience the supernatural component before it experiences the natural or vice versa. And this speaks of uh, uh, the stars of, of heaven. So uh, could, could there be some literal you know, stars that come out of their course, that could happen. Uh, certainly asteroids and meteorites, I believe, will be involved. And I believe that as, as we study further, we will uh, see them being described. But it can also describe, uh, remember, stars can represent the, uh, the angelic hosts both the good side and the bad. And God has spoken very clearly through Haggai and then the book of Hebrews reiterated it. God says, I will shake once again, not only the earth. He was, uh, the earth shook at Mount Sinai when God came to reveal the, uh, the basic way of walking for not just the Israelites, but for all people, for all time. Uh, and the earth shook, but he said, not only will the earth shake, because there's earthquakes, but I will shake the heavens. And so there is a shaking in the hierarchy of the demonic realm, and uh, that could end up manifesting in the natural realm, in, in the, you know, what we would call the cosmos, in the universe, in the, in the star system. But it definitely is this particular thing that the uh, stars will be shaken and fallen uh, does refer supernaturally and to the spiritual uh, realm of, 
of angelic, ungodly angelic hosts. I want to just um, leave with uh, probably a, a psalm that we'll start up our next session with. Psalm 46. Uh, God. God is an ever-present help in time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth shake, though the mountains topple into the sea, though its waves foam and roar. And, you know, we've always loved to read that scripture and just interpreted it allegorically with, you know, some of the upheavals in our, in our lives, but actually we will find it has a very literal um, fulfillment. And so, dear ones, God is an ever-present help in time of trouble, and we will not fear even as we read about these things, even as they would begin to happen, and as we train our children to be uh, made ready and ready to trust the Lord, no matter what is coming. So, God bless you. Shalom.